Adam has TPK'd the party. Because CR math is hard, and I don't have a calculator, and I'm all out of bubble gum. Welcome back, everybody. Hopefully. I hope it's a back, or maybe it's a first time. I don't know. Doesn't really matter. Um... I don't have a transition or a segue out of this. I am here. I am Josh. Isaiah is here. What's up? Matt is also here. Listen, I thought, you know, I, I thought the four shadows against, you know, a level 10 party wouldn't be a problem. And uh, yeah, all my players dumped strength. So that was, uh, that was, that was a bad move on my part. You know, it's funny. I was actually just recently talking to my girlfriend about this, how it's <laughs> hilarious that if you have like an eight strength wizard, which is not unreasonable. That could happen yeah, at yeah. early levels. Uh, and shadows are CR one half with four players. You could fight like I want to say it's like six of them would be like a normal encounter or something like that. Yep. Two attacks from a shadow could just auto give the wizard. Yep. Yep. Just good night. Fucking Flauzabaz, the the floor Bernarder, the great. I told you guys in the uh, was it the three year game they had uh, they made stronger versions of shadows for five e. And I used them against my players, Ooh. and I and they were they you know, again they were like level sixteen. I'm like, oh, this is only like a medium to easy encounter. This is only supposed to spoop them. I almost killed two of them, my players. Who made level stronger 16s. versions of shadows? They're CR nine. They're basically like shadow assassin you guys. They're from Ooh, they're from that is Mage. such a dick move. Bro. What the fuck? <laughs> They're, the they're CR9 cool. shadow. That's crazy. They're cool. They're cool, but they but the thing is they don't. It's not that like. They take more strength. It's they take the same amount of strength as a normal shadow. They're just stronger. So you can throw them at higher level parties, which is what I did. But again, not realizing that, like, oh, no, half my party dumped strength. No matter what level. Oops. Yeah, it doesn't <laughs> matter. Like yeah, because <laughs> stats don't y'all seen scale that much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like if Have they made stronger the fucking uh, banshees. The whale ridiculous. is still going to kill them. Mm -hmm. This motherfucker. <laughs> the, just the ridiculous stranger danger energy that the shadow art like gives off <laughs> this sweet caress in the night like just the no, normal please go away the normal yeah, he, he, shadow? Come, he comes up from your shadow and tickles your bum yeah that's figure. that's right off uh 5e tools yeah yeah that's the monster manual yep yeah yeah it's just very uncomfortable i don't i don't like how it's sweetly caressing him <laughs> i think and covering his mouth at the same time i was gonna say i think he's supposed to be choking him Why, you sounds know? like he's just going like shh I'm you, this, evil. <laughs> the shadow's hitting him with some chloroform. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. You all coming to the shadow run with me, boy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> fucking teleports. Uh, yeah. Mm, yeah, that's a... It's, whenever, it's that mm. thing that you do whenever you put a sibling in a headlock and you're like, go to sleep. Yeah. Yeah. Sleep. Yep. Just petting the back of their head as you're choking as the they, life out. As they lose consciousness, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. What? I mean, yeah. I've never done that. Mm. I'm not going to say I have... Mostly because I don't have siblings, but, you know, I wish I've considered it. Uh, yeah, segues are hard. Where where are we at? What day is it? Um, I don't know. You know, uh, CR. What are we talk yeah, what are we talking thing. about today? Challenge Josh? rating in D&D 5e. Um, Hooray, my favorite topic. Well, it's your favorite topic today, motherfucker. <laughs> right? Sit down. It's story no, time. I, I like that. I recently just had a problem about this too. So yeah, that's why I'm yeah, like, oh, this, yeah. this is good. <laughs> um, before that, however, you, you, dear listener, can increase your challenge rating by hitting the like or subscribe button. Like, what? Hitting the follow or subscribe button on your podcast platform of choice. <clears throat> but for legal reasons, I can't guarantee it will increase your CR. But it might. But it might not. It will allegedly increase your CR. Allegedly. Allegedly. Oh. The ultimate legal word, allegedly. By CR, he means dong size. I do. I do mean your dong size. Yes, that's uh, that's how CR is measured for the adult human male. It's crazy, I know. Uh, which means I'd be like CR twenty in the monster manual. Anyway, um, CR challenge rating. It's a thing in five e. Roll credits. And Thanks for coming, everybody. <laughs> and <laughs> you may be surprised to learn well I, I, the two other people in, the, in, in this conversation be, be surprised to learn I don't know if uh, someone listening would be surprised because uh, I don't think I've mentioned this that much I actually am sort of a defender of CR 
I don't know I if that's a, yeah, it might be a bit of a shocker. I know. Um, but you know, I'm a defender of CR because I've played other games mm. and other games. Um, just some just don't have a difficulty measuring system at all. And I know people bitch about CR a lot and there's problems with it. Um, mm -hmm. but you don't, you don't know what you have until it's gone. Let me tell you. Supposedly, supposedly Pathfinder 2E has a really good, like, measure on C. We don't talk whatever about Whatever they use for CR and stuff. We don't talk about nope. Pathfinder here, Matt. Okay. Sacrilegious. <laughs> I think they still call it CR, though. I don't actually know. I haven't looked. I don't, I don't actually know what they call it, but I just saw, uh, I'm, I, from what I've heard and from what I've read, Pathfinder uh, 2, 2 has it down pretty, pretty well. Maybe. Uh, point being, yeah, I'm sort of a CR defender. And um, because, again, it, it it's uh, listen, when you would you when you're dealing with it, it's annoying when you don't have it. Suddenly you're like, wait a goddamn minute. So, you know, um, it's it's a thing. Also, I, I think it's just levels. In I think they just have creature levels. I don't think they call it challenge rating. Anyway, doesn't matter because I'm not going to talk about Pathfinder because I don't know enough to say about Pathfinder. Um, but where I don't Jesus Christ, I don't know. OK, I was doing too many things in my brain at once. I just opened up the Pathfinder PDF and I was kind of looking at stuff and I was trying to talk at the same time. That was a hilarious fucking failure. My brain just shut down completely. Reeling it in, reeling it in, restarting. So, I mean, just in case anyone listening is maybe not clear or whatever, um, CR, which stands for Challenge Rating, is the general rating system for how strong or weak the power level, the general power level of a creature in 5e that is not players. Players have level. Level? Players have levels. Everything else has challenge rating. And the CR scale goes all the way from zero, one eighth, one quarter, one half, all the way up to 30? 30. Yeah, yeah. 30. 30, which you know, I based think... on that dong size statement, if someone were to be like, LOL, CR zero, I would, I'd cry for them, genuinely. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, I would also cry for them. Um, there are only currently four things at CR 30. And one of them is Tiamat twice. And sorry, and two of them are Tiamat twice. So, yeah, you know, um, there's the <laughs> aspect of Tiamat, the aspect of Bahamut, both from Fizzbands, the Tarask <laughs> from the Monster Manual, and the original Tiamat from Rise of the uh, Adventure Rise of Tiamat. Those are the only CR 30 <laughs> creatures. I, okay. Yes. Technically speaking. We also have the elder dinosaurs from Planescape Ixalan. I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> we don't acknowledge that supplement because Wizards doesn't acknowledge that supplement. That's Price. rude. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, I'm just I'm just stating the facts here. You know, it's Look, weird. Too, have you, have you seen the three headed feathered T-Rex? I have not. Oh, no. yeah, that shit's awesome. This thing is so sexy. Not I should way. be using more of the plant escape stuff from my players because I'm running a Magic the Gathering setting, but I'm not. But, but I'm not, and I won't. Um, yeah. Also, you know what? You know what? Also, you find it weird that they go from like CR, you have CR 27, CR 28, CR 30. Yeah. Nothing. No T 29. No 29. I get it. Because like, again, who plays D&D at level 19? Like... So it's like, all right, nine's a weird, awkward number. Let's just bump that up right there. Third, right, there we go. Bing, bang, boom. We're done. But like, it's weird that there's nothing. Not even one example. It's a little random, but like, whatever. A like smidge. Something. I don't know. Whatever. Never really thought that much about it. It's kind of a thing. Mm. Yeah. Uh, the the three-headed T-Rex, just fun fact for you, does 62 <laughs> damage on a bite. 8d4, 8d12 plus 10. Good. 8d12 <laughs> plus 10. That's a lot. Yeah. Yep. Oh, and then uh, it's it's the acid from its swallow does 16d6. Jesus. That's a lot there, Batman. That's a lot of d6s. 
Well, I know what I'm doing to my players if they ever go back to find the fucking uh, other T-Rex in my setting. <laughs> For comparison, <laughs> Tiamat's bite attack does 2d12 plus 10 and 3d12 force damage. So I what? love that it does force damage. That's great. That's so magical five, to me. 5d12 yeah. plus 10 damage. So, yeah, that three-headed T-Rex hits harder than Tiamat? Apparently. What the fuck? You guys like that, too, that they're making higher level monsters just do force damage instead of like saying their weapons are magical. Um, it's a little janky because they're trying to retroactively correct the game as it is. Mm-hmm. Had they done it from the start, though, it would have made a lot of sense. Uh, it just feels awkward because that's not how the game like. You read old books and they don't do that. You read new books and they do do that. So it feels weird because they're trying to like patch the game. Um, yeah, but I think it's fine. It would have it would be a lot better if it, we had had it from the jump. But, you know, whatever. It's fine because mm-hmm. force yeah, damage. I, mean, I, I Force damage kind of already feels like weird mystical magic damage anyway, because it's so like vague and nondescript. Yeah. I mean, that's what force damage I've, is. It's I've always just ruled it as pure kinetic energy, like like Which, thunder damage is, is decibel sound, like a kinetic, like a concussive blast. But force damage is just pure kinetic force. I mean, they have the definitions up on the player handbook. Like force damage literally is you know pure magical energy focused on damaging. You know, is that how they describe it? Yeah, that's how they describe it in the player handbook. Oh well, then there you go. Yeah, yeah. so it's literally just and magic they, juice. They, they have a uh, they have a thing for each damage type, like acid bludgeoning, all that, and then they give like descriptions on certain spells. So it's like, you know, uh, force damage, like magic missile and spiritual weapon. Right. Yeah. Which I forgot, spiritual weapon dealt force it damage. Does, yes. I just I just thought it just dealt just damage, and I'm like, all right, nope, <laughs> nope, it's force damage. Force damage is kind of the closest thing the game has to like pure true damage, true damage. even yeah. though sneak attack is sort of true damage but right it's fine i get i whatever don't think about that one too hard um anyways here uh, yeah whatever uh so the force damage thing is a little wonky it feels like they're trying to retroactively fix a problem which i mean they are but you know whatever mm. um yeah, all right. So challenge rating. Where, where are we at with this? Challenge rating is the measurement system by which the game tells you how hard something should be to fight relative to your players. Mm-hmm. Anyone who's paid any attention to D&D 5e discourse for, I don't know, more than a day, probably is going to find out that basically everyone is like CR fucking sucks and the math doesn't work. And I'm not going to defend that point. I mean, that is mostly true. Uh, The math is not very good. The math that they give you in the DMG to design encounters is weird and confusing. The the CR system doesn't seem to really genuinely indicate how hard or easy something or should should or should not be. The you can't even really. I think this is the part I hate about it the most. You can't easily reverse engineer challenge rating, right? Because a lot of 5e is based like 5e doesn't tell you how its math works 90% of the time, right? The game obfuscates its math. So the way people figure it out is by reverse engineering the, the numbers that we do have. So people will look at stat blocks for monsters and go, okay, if I reverse engineer how much damage it does, if I break down the HP and the hit dice and stuff, and people will break it down and figure those things out. Through that reverse engineering, what we have figured out with challenge rating is that um, certain things just don't count towards challenge rating seemingly at random. Just just because wizards done felt like it. Uh, and the classic example that Matt made a joke about, but is accurate is shadows. Shadows are the classic. Oops. I done TPK my party monster because they're CR one half. And now you might go, okay, they're CR one half. So they must be pretty weak, right? They're not even one. They're not even CR one. They're below level one. And you're like, yep, 
They have 12 AC, which is very easy to hit, and 16 HP, which is not a ton. Even at that low level, that's not a lot of HP. That's, you know, like level two characters that's, have. Yeah, about that's that. one solid barbarian hit at level that's, one. Uh, maybe two. But yeah, maybe one crit. Uh, mm. But they have an ability. Or they're not even they have an ability. Their primary attack is their strength drain attack where they deal 2d6 plus 2 necrotic damage. Now, first of all, let me just say, by the way, any monster below CR1 that deals 2 damage die worth of damage is already like, what? whoa, wait, what are we doing here? I'm immediately like, hold on. Just as just a blanket rule. And then it has a plus two flat. So minimum three or minimum four damage, which is already like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We're level one, right? CR one half monster. You fight at level one. Usually maybe level two. Level one shadows get a guaranteed four damage. So I'm already like, what the fuck? As as we're learning from Wizards of the Coast adventures, uh, level one players need are, are supposed to die. Yeah. Well, and then the adventure starts when you make your new character. Yeah, level one yeah, characters are basically yeah, yeah, yeah. just Star Trek red shirts. I mean, it's, they're not supposed to be, but yeah. <laughs> but the real ch- the real danger of a shadow is when they attack you, they roll a D4 and reduce your strength by that number. So if they roll a four, your strength goes down by four. They roll a two, it goes down by two, so on and so forth. Yep. If the target strength hits zero, you die. And yep. just to be clear, when we say die, not you're downed. You're just dead. You're just flat out dead. You don't get death saves or nothing. You're just dead. Yeah. Yeah. Also, you raise, oh, you get turned into a shadow 1d4 hours later. So you die, and then you turn into a shadow afterwards. So yeah, if you can't haul ass to a church and just happen to have 300 gold pieces, you're fucked. Yeah. That's yeah. Weird too. They, give you, they yeah. give you a chart in the DMG on like homebrewing monsters and like it has a whole thing of like what feature or ability will affect the challenge rating. And so like they have like aggressive no. feature on orcs. Yeah, no, no, those abilities. That's the thing. Those abilities, they don't assign, at least to my knowledge, the last time I looked at it, they don't assign a CR affecting value to those. No, no, like no. the so abilities look, uh, aren't considered. Yeah, they are. So I'm looking right now aggressive for an orc. Increase the monster's effective per round damage output by two. Okay. And it's like okay. Then you go to the chart. Oh, and then you go to, to the damage room, chart. You, it's it's expecting you to. Well, that's just oh one example. They have one God. for increasing AC for targeting more people. Right, right. So the, and you, you have to play this thing of going back, going and, back forth and forth, back and forth. Right, right. Yeah. From looking at this chart to like like I'll, I'll look another example, breath weapon, ancient black dragon. Yes. For the purpose of determining affected damage output, assume the breath weapon hits two targets and that each target fails its saving throw, and then you have to like. Look up how much damage the dragon breath damage weapon it does, does, then go to the chart yeah. and then be like, okay, so this damage is this, so that means it's this CR. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So um, they have a whole chart of different effects. The, sh- the, sh- the all all this to say, the shadow is not on here. The strength drain isn't on there. No. Right. The shadow demon is. So. But that has nothing to do with the, the, the regular shadow. Right. Right. Yeah. Strength drain not mentioned, and that's what I mean. Where sometimes. Wizards just ignores their own CR math and they've publicly admitted that the CR math that they gave us in the DMG is not what they use for their in in office testing and playing. They've yeah. admitted that multiple times. Yeah, I mean, they tried to fix it with Xanathar's, but like Did that. They? No, it didn't. Uh, I'm saying they, they tried, but like it didn't. Did they even really try? Half hearted attempt. <laughs> uh, some of it, because like some of it did like help I'm with challenge rating, but sure. not again, not it, it was a band aid. The it point wasn't being a fully fixed thing. The point being, if you try to reverse engineer the CR math with monsters, what you will often find is that monsters have abilities that seem like they should make it a higher CR than it is, but they don't because raisins, just because wizards fucking felt like it basically right like they just elect to ignore it sometimes when they wanna so even people who like make third party supplements and all this other shit and have taken the time to break all this fucking math down 
look at all this CR shit and go, dog, this shit don't make no damn sense. Because <laughs> it doesn't. However, as I said, I'm going to come in defense of CR now. Sort of. I don't know. Should it? Unless Matt or Isaiah have something else they want to add here. Well, Isaiah, I say, I know Isaiah, you're like the homebrewy, like monster masher. So like, what's up? Yeah, I mean, so my, I'm going to keep it a buck with y'all. Uh, <laughs> I use the Hellscapes um, CR guide. So, like, if you increase its size, you add like a quarter CR. If you give it an extra die of health, you increase it a quarter CR. Okay. Um, but at some point, the math does fall apart. Um, almost like hmm. this game was like in beta and just never made it past that point. Well, uh, I mean, because can my we characters even, do. Can we even blame blame Hellscapes though? Because the math falls apart in Five E too, and that game's not in beta. <laughs> it, true, it does, it does. But I figured with the lack of magic, but there are magic like abilities, like the fucking scavenger. I can just turn any material into anything, like I'm Gene Fucking Gray. Um, I figured it would have held up a little bit longer than it did. Uh, oh. so at some point, genuinely, I just go. I have to just wing it. Yep. Like, I'll just take it. Like, and and again, because the players are dealing basically double the typical damage of your normal five E character, even at level seventeen. Uh, I I like I have very little doubt that my players probably wouldn't have struggled that much with something like Orcus, even though they don't have magic because they just output so much damage, mm. like hundreds of points of damage around. Interesting theory. I don't well, think Orcus would have made it two rounds. In almost, my party. Makes, almost makes me want to test that. I worth like, doing like just randomly throw like throw like at, in like a non canon fucking, you know, dream session or whatever. Just have your players like fight actual just straight up Orcus and don't modify a stat block and just like see, see what happens. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I I would be willing to try that. It sounds actually kind of fun. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, classic example, right? Classic complaint. So all that being said, why am I going to say that I'm now going to defend CR? Well, because it doesn't work as intended. It does work if you use it wrong. Huh? Which, I mean, maybe sounds like a crazy statement. And yeah, I don't, a little bit. I, but like, the thing about CR rating is, so the math, and Matt literally does this and has done this, the math that they give you in the book for how you should calculate it in terms of a per encounter basis, right? So it's like, a monster's worth, you have, an, you have a certain amount of an XP budget, you add the monster together, that XP budget, you know, uh, based on, how, it's like, you know, your players are each an average level, that gives you your budget, you spend towards the budget, as you add monsters, you multiply the budget based on how many monsters are, because action economy, blah, blah, blah. If you do all that, the CR math is going to feel very strange and wonky. If you use the CR number as a vague guideline for your own system, it works a lot better. <laughs> Wait, hold on. He's cooking. Hold on. It's it, it really does. So like what's so Matt, what's the system that you use? What I remember you explaining it one time, but I can't remember exactly what it was. I know you have like a weird like number of players versus level verts or something. So What's, I use it C because uh, I'm subscribed to the Sly Flourish Patreon. Right, yeah. What is that? I what is that? System? Have a bunch of his book. So uh, it's the Deadly Encounter Threshold, which mm -hmm. changes depending on the level of your players. So currently, my players are level nine. Yep. And so the the way he does the math is the an encounter may be deadly if the math is you add up all the players' number. Uh, levels together and then you divide that you cut that in half if they're level like I think five to like 11 or 16 or something so right now that's where my current my players are so like which I think the number should be 27 because I have six hold on uh you can do it man I believe yeah nine, 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 nine 
Nine times it, six. Twenty-seven. Yeah, nine. Yeah, nine times six divided by two. So mm. Twenty-seven. So then basically you add up the CR of all the monsters. You don't do the fucking the the five E thing where it's like, well, if you have two monsters, then you times it by two or one point five. Wait, blah, blah, blah. wait, wait, wait. Did you say nine times six was twenty-seven? No, no. Nine times no, six. Nine times six then divide divided by in two. two. Yeah. Okay. So Nine 52, times six 54, gets you divided by two divide. is 27. Yeah. Okay. So okay. if I add up all the monsters I throw at my players and the CR total is 27, 27. or higher, that's probably a deadly encounter. Now, if and you look up is like that anything, over the adventuring day? Uh, you know what? I think it's no, it's just an encounter, okay. not even adventuring day. It's just an encounter because okay. again, I'm doing the weird strict save in school things so like there's a lot of long rests in between fucking encounters in well re- regardless of what you're doing in particular i'm just talking about the system itself is it intended to be 27 cr levels over a day no 27 it's supposed CR to be it's, it's, in it's, one it's an encounter it's just a benchmark of like hey if the math for the encounter is 27 that's or higher, to make it deadly though that's that yeah that's to make it deadly Okay. Now, if you look at like, so like hypothetically, let's say, you know, for, for, you know just uh, not spoilers or anything. Uh, hypothetically for my players, if I threw, I think it was because I'm doing the math. If I threw nine, like uh, two or three CR nine creatures at my players at six, I have six players by me. According to the regular 5e, that's an overly deadly Omega encounter. Do not don't do it. Right. Stop. Right. But according to this. It's fine. That's just three players. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, just add more. But and again, um, the one thing that uh, the the five E and this is like the big like argument against like the whole CR thing. CR doesn't account for players that have magical items. It does. And that bumps their like abilities up. So like my players currently, they are level nine. But with all with the and again, I this is on me. I gave them too much magic items. Uh, with the current their build because they're more tactical than Hold on, I wait, am. Wait, 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 Matt, Matt, Six players, level nine. I have more players, level Hold on, nine. Wait, wait, pause, pause. Magic Just, items. Hold on, yeah. stop, pause. You have six players at level nine. Yeah. Yes. Okay. According to the five E calculations, three Glabrazu, which are CR nine, is yep. an abs- is beyond deadly. It's an absurd level encounter. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And by the Sly Flourish math, it is a normal deadly encounter. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Like by his stand, like and he even mentions in in his in a couple of the books that he's done this, and I've used this a couple of times. And has the math worked out? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. The math has worked out only only recently, and that's because I fucked up the math and my party party leveled up two times in like two quick successions because the deck of many things. Uh, <laughs> otherwise, this has been like any deadly encounter I throw at them. I've been using this system. And again, if it's like one or two points under, that's fine. If it's now, above the 27, which is a thing I've been thinking about recently, uh, uh, then that's where I'm going to be more hesitant. And that's where, like, again, he talks about the dials, you know, you can play with as a DM. You can lower, you know, lower the health. You can mid combat. You can like say oh if they're bloody they're they're right, right, right. but let's not even let's fine. not get into all that yeah. right let's just stick to the yeah, pure yeah, yeah. cr math let's not because yeah, all that other stuff is superfluous stuff. or, or oh, supplemental uh, Look, i guess on. going back to what i was waiting before anything going wait, back wait. to what i was saying so my players are currently level nine uh-huh. regard uh when it comes to math wise and cr wise they are about the, they have the power level of a level 11 character they're two levels higher like power wise the normal character based on what uh based on their abilities and magic items and the amount of damage they do because i've had to calculate their damage and their, and everything and their okay. average acs and all this cra- crazy well non-challenge rating nonsense. right right so <laughs> let's let's <laughs> let's ignore the effective level of the players because that's kind of a different set of numbers here yeah. just looking at okay so they're level nine mm. so according to 5e six level nine players if they were to fight three Glabrazu, those Glabrazu would absolutely body the fuck out of them, according to 5e. Yep. What you're saying is, no, 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 only like one player is going to go down. Yeah. Now, question real quick. The Sly mm-hmm. Flourish method you are using with the 
his version of the deadly encounter, is it the same as the Watsi version, which is to say one player goes down? Uh, is that how he's using me, the word deadly? Like, is he no, using I, the word the same as them? Let me double check that. Or is uh, it at least within mean, the same realm? It doesn't need to be super specific, in, but does that uh, seem to be like in the same realm? Yeah, because I don't think he, he even ends up talking about in his newest book where he's like, listen, he's like, there's deadly encounters where you want to knock a player out or two. Or they're going to expend a bunch of resources. Mm -hmm. And then beyond that, he's like, then we have like TPK. And he's like, and we don't want to go here. He's like, this okay. is the line. Right. So he's OK. Pass. So he's using deadly encounter versus you want them to die encounter. Right. Yeah. So so he's generally using it sounds like similar to the Watsi description, which 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 we have recently. Oh, that might not have been a puck. I don't remember. Okay, just for anyway. the sake of it, yeah. Watsi's definition of a deadly encounter for anyone. Mm, yeah, listening. we talked about this. Yeah. I don't remember if we talked about it on air. That's why I don't. We we have, but okay. yeah, go for it. Watsi's <laughs> definition is a deadly encounter is one is an encounter where one player goes down, not dies. One player goes down. That's a deadly at yeah. least once. Yep. Okay. So Sly Fleur said, all right, fine. I'm going to use a similar definition. It was what it sounds like, or at least a mostly similar definition. Yeah. So what Matt just described, that's one example of how you can take the CR number and not use it as intended, but still use it for your math and come up with an encounter. I have my own method that I've just devised on my own. And um, this is not as uh, my method is not as scientific, if you will. But my method is basically you just treat CR as if it is one to one with player levels. So a CR nine monster is the same as a level nine player character. That's how I treat CR. That is not what the book, this is not what the book tells you to do at all. And then what I do is I say, okay, I have four level five players. So the first thing I'm going to do if I want a hard encounter is start looking at CR five monsters. And then if I want to go up a little and make it a little harder, I'll look at CR six or seven monsters because effectively all I'm doing is treating it like a JRPG where if the monster's a couple of levels above you, it's dangerous. And if there's a couple levels below you, you're going to you're going to wipe the floor with them. Yeah. And That's then funny. even even says that for like the challenge part in the monster manual where it's like, uh, was it approximately equipped and well rested party of four adventures should be able to defeat a monster of a challenge rating equal to its level without suffering any deaths. Right. For example, a party of four level three characters should fight one CR three monster be worthy, but not deadly. So, like, but I don't do it as one. Yeah. So what I do is I go, okay, player level and CR level are roughly one to one. And then I throw in a couple of monsters just to be like, all right, well, if it's four level five players, I can put at least, at least three level, or sorry, three CR five monsters. And now you might be saying, Josh, where the fuck are you getting the number three? I, I just kind of am feeling it out because I just know how the game works. And this is why I say my method is less scientific. But this is the thing, as someone who just got out of a three and a half year campaign, literally just finished, hallelujah, praise the Lord. You start to just get a feel for how the the, the math kind of works. And you get a feel for what the numbers do. And you like, at a certain point, you can look at to hit bonuses and damage rolls and all that other shit and have a vague idea of like, this is about how hard or how easy this will be. And then if you just use the, the CR equals level method, you can basically just ballpark the encounters. And 90% of the time you'll be fine. And that's just another example of not at all using the math, how it tells you or how it's intended to be used, but it's still working. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I Honestly, so the way you're the way you're wording, it does make sense, right? You, you sort of make up the equivalent of whatever their sum total levels are with a sum total level basically, of monsters. Yes. 
yeah, I think that works perfectly fine. I probably have done that, actually. I was going to say, it sounds like that's kind of similar to what you're doing. Yeah, so what I will typically do is... Um, so I also have six players, and right now I can just say... I'm trying to think of the last combat they did. That one doesn't really count because th there was like waves of enemies and they had rests in between. But like, uh, back when they were like level 12, let's say, I would probably throw them up against the CR 18 monster because there's six of them. So CR 18, you're like, that's kind of high, but there's six of them and all damage is basically doubled. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I would go, okay, so there's six of them and I'll probably throw in, you know, two CR5 monsters right before the fight just to soften them up a little bit and that will sort of come out to you know six times twelve that's if I could I mean that's CR fucking sixty um or seventy two or whatever but you know <laughs> yep uh so I, I, I guess I, I I use a similar math but I don't come up with the same numbers but yeah I, I see what you're saying yeah, I, I mean, maybe this is just because I'm a fucking, I don't know, wee, weeaboo nerd who plays a bunch of JRPGs, but that just seemed like the most logical way to go about it. Like, mm -hmm. before I even really started to look at how the game tells you to do it, that was just kind of the assumption my brain made, is that CR and level are equal to each other, uh, even though the book very explicit, explicitly tells you they're not. Um, or it says they're, no, I shouldn't even say that. The book says they're like sort of equivalent, but not really equivalent, which is not that helpful. Yeah, it's saying for a part, yeah, four people, four players like of level one should be able to fight one level one guy. Right. Which is, which not, is not one to one because it's four yeah. versus one. Exactly. And it's like, all right. Which is immediately like, all right, so it's not telling me CR is one to one, but if you treat it as one to one, I have seen better success. So like, and then if you want to do a singular monster, right, if you want to do a singular monster boss fight, you just drastically overshoot your party's level. So if you have four level 10 players, what's a boss fight monster? Like a CR 18. Like you just like way overshoot the player levels as if there was only one player character, even though there's four. Uh, and all of the uh, all of this is to point out or to say. Challenge rating. As the book tells you to use it. Kind of goofy doesn't work great. The math is also kind of complicated. Like I've tried to I've read that encounter builder section multiple times and multiple times my brain has just given up because it's just kind of a wonky fucking section. Like it's just not it's just not an easy read for some reason. I don't know why. I don't know if you guys have felt the same way, but yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've, I've read it. I haven't read it recently, but I, I have read it and it just went like my brain went. Yeah, this sounds good on paper, but not in practice. <laughs> like, yeah, it seems exactly. like this falls apart on like the, the simplest provocation it, it, of practice. It seems hmm. it's very. Um, it's very. Yeah, it's very like theoretical physics as opposed to applicable physics right like it's like yeah it's an interesting idea i have no way to prove it but it's an interesting idea you know it's like quantum yeah, theory like, it, type it's okay. shit. So I, I understand this is how it's supposed to work but it really does so what's up with this <laughs> right it's like yeah it doesn't it doesn't seem to shake down the way that you it doesn't shake down the way that you guys wanted to shake down so but again what this is really illustrating is that so each of us has a slightly different method we use. And if you go online and look for, you know, supplements or help videos or whatever, lots of people are going to have lots of different methods for how they implement all this crazy CR math shit. And like what this tells me is the math the game tells you to use not very helpful. But the CR number as a variable is a useful variable. 
right? Like they gave yeah. you a shitty equation, but the challenge rating variable can be used in other types of equations to get you a better result. Yes. And this is why I say I'm sort of a defender of CR in that I understand why people get annoyed. I understand why people get frustrated and why people feel like it's a bad system that just doesn't do what it's supposed to do. I get all that. But if you just use the number as a reference, as a as a a um, as a point of measurement rather than like basically ignore ignore wizards math but use the numbers that wizards has provided you can get much more helpful yeah, results or follow the <laughs> equation not the numbers right like take what whatever they're saying you take it as no, a other base, way around some, follow the numbers not the equation yeah sorry that's yeah take whatever they're saying take the generalized idea of what they're trying to pr- uh, portray to you and realize that it is subject to change and almost certainly will change. But if yeah. you use it as a framework, it will lead you at the very least in the right direction. Yeah, bare, bare minimum, it'll get you thinking yeah. about stuff. <laughs> the broadest of strokes. Yes, at the, at the absolute barest minimum. And, you know, it it... it, it <sighs> It is frustrating that we have to do all this extra work to, you know, make the game feel like it's functioning properly. But be happy that the designers at least tried to give you some sort of a useful math equation. They didn't maybe succeed, but at least they're trying. You know what I mean? Because... Some games barely try. Mm. And that's where we kind of get into a whole different realm. And, you know, I I think there's another thing is that as you play 5e and I I don't know how older. I don't know how the older um, editions of 5e really shaked all this stuff out i'd be willing to bet though that probably the very early versions of 5e had no kind of guidance on what monsters were strong and what monsters were easy i think you probably just had to figure it out um but if you play on a 5e you start to become very intuitive or it starts to become (laughs) sentences are hard right now (laughs) it starts to become very intuitive what what monsters what enemies line up with their CR and what ones kind of don't like if you've been GMing for two years you're gonna look at a creature like a shadow or a banshee and go oh this thing punches above its weight class I can tell by these particular abilities this is a higher CR than it says it is And that stuff you just kind of have to learn by doing. Which I don't even necessarily think is bad. It just kind of is, you know? It's mostly annoying. Like, if you're a GM, you're like, I just want to throw an encounter out there. And then you're like, oopsie, this encounter was way too weak. Or oopsie, this encounter is way too deadly. And you're like, you know, you're doing the Mr. Incredible math is math. Like, point out the book. Yeah. Well, so I got a question for you. Yes. do you think the shadow deserves to be CR one half? Uh, I personally think it does. I don't th- no. I think it should be a little bit higher, but not much because the thing about shadows is they are very glass cannon. You can kill them very easily, but they are super deadly. So the thing with them, yeah, their glass can they don't have a lot of AC. They their AC is low mean, six, and they have very little six, HP. Yes. And, and the they're two hit. They have only a plus four to hit. Now, hypothetically, right. let, let's just say you're playing with a full party of paladins. Them shadows ain't doing shit. Like right. at lower right. levels. But like, yeah, if it's a paladin and then a druid and then a wizard and then I don't know, a cleric. I, paladin cleric probably gonna be okay. Wizard and druid gonna have a rough time (laughs) like in general i get okay 
here's my thing. Uh, yeah. Math is, math. is this another take a shot situation every time Josh mentions 4E? I don't know, maybe. 4E? Nah, you haven't mentioned 4E <laughs> that much. Have I not? Okay. I feel like the thing about shadows, right, is if 5E had a um, what sort I'm looking for? For so for D and D four E had the monster type system right where there were there were frontline monsters and there were artillery monsters and there were controller monsters and boss monsters right that whole type system. Mm-hmm. If five E had something like that then I think the shadow being a CR one half sort of would make sense more because you could label the shadow as a, you know, a striker type or whatever, or a, a nuking type monster or something like that. Right. Cause the thing about the shadow is it kills you very fast, but you can kill it really fast. Yeah. The problem is five E doesn't have that. So immediately you go, okay. Five E doesn't have that but there are monsters that fall into these categories. And again, you have to do this reverse engineering bullshit where you look at a bunch of monsters and you play the game for a little while and you start to notice, oh, there are categories of monster. The game just doesn't mention them. Oh, do you want me to? Because uh, so I also I purchased the MCDM Flea Mortals available now. Yes, not sponsored. Uh-huh. Um, do you want me to go over their shadow? Because their shadow is also a CR one half. Well, hold that thought. But yeah, yeah. Uh, in a sec. Um, yeah. I, I, I think, yeah, I think the problem is that the shadow feels like it punches above its weight class because its ability to slap the shit out of somebody without you being... Pr- you know, maybe it's not even that it punches above its weight class. Maybe the problem is that the shadow catches... GMs by surprise where its ability to kill players is the kind of thing where people go, oh, it shouldn't be that dangerous. CR one half. And then they find out it's actually quite dangerous and they're not ready for it. I think that's oh, probably no. more of the problem. Or you're like, I threw 27 of them at my level four players. How could <laughs> right. this possibly happen? You're like, you're like, <laughs> I don't understand. I didn't throw that many shadows, but then you don't realize the thing you don't realize is that, oh, character stats don't like character HP progresses in 5e very linearly right like character HP goes up and up and up and up as the players level character stats do not right like a player uh, a wizard who has 8 strength at level 1 probably will have 8 strength at level 20 so a wizard who's level 20 who gets jumped by like 6 shadows could die to six shadows <laughs> right so it's i think the problem is that they catch people by surprise and because there's no there's no monster type labeling system or th- something that would warn you about that they feel like they don't really fit i yeah. love so, the idea of a wizard being surrounded by six shadows, just being like, no, and just like casting fireball at fifth <laughs> yeah, level yeah, yeah, on yeah. themselves. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. That's the kind of shit. Like, I, I won't die, but you absolutely will. <laughs> right, and it, that's the kind of shit you do. Like, with <sighs> shadows, unless you're like, because uh, there are actually some later monsters that have the ability to summon shadows as like uh, a legendary true, action true. shit. Very so true. Those are like bosses, and if you throw those in a boss encounter, it's like that's pretty mean, but yes. it's supposed to be mean there. But at lower levels, you're not really supposed to be dealing with more than like two shadows. And like hypothetically, let's even go further. Like the Banshee, the Banshee's whale, Banshee's the Banshee, a CR yeah. four creature. A Banshee at low level is a boss. That's like a boss encounter. Pretty much. Doesn't have legendary actions or anything, but basically turn one and at low levels, unless you, any of your players have magical items or the ability to turn their weapons into magic items, I think the what the Banshees in Comporeal, so they only like they only deal half damage anyways. Um, so if the Banshee gets their whale off, it could potentially be a TPK. Banshees have resistance to acid, fire, lightning, thunder, bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing from non magical. Okay, so yeah, so unless so one of your that's a lot of resistance. Having, yeah, so like at yeah. low like at level four and below, a Banshee possibly is like a boss. Pretty almost. much. 
But like, again, after that, again, yeah. Banshee not labeled as a boss monster because 5e oh. doesn't have any kind of labeling system, yeah. but it probably should be. Um, here's actually here's another monster that kind of hits above its weight class because it's such a good roundabout care uh, monster, the Cult Fanatic. Mm. Cult Fanatic has a bunch of good spells that it can do. Its main attack hits pretty hard, but the other thing that makes it like again, it's only CR two, but spells, it hits above it its weight class. It has spiritual weapon. Spiritual weapon, yeah. So it's getting basically like three attacks around. Like three if you're yep, just like yep, yep. stab, stab, spiritual weapon. Yep. Or cast a big damage spell, spiritual weapon. Like, you know. It also has hold person, which is pretty effective at lower level. Yeah, hold person. And like, let's say, because like, you know, when you fight cultists, you don't just fight one cultist. You fight you many fight cultists. A group, yeah. So if you have a bunch of these guys around and like one of them casts like, you know, or two of them cast hold person. The other one cast, uh, I don't know, fucking spiritual weapon or Omega death, like cult beam, whatever it does. <laughs> inflict, w- inflict wound. Yeah, yeah, inflict wounds. Then it's like, oh shit. Yep, <laughs> yep. So it's yeah, it, yeah. These guys are mean. Like these, they're they're a mean fight, and they're good. They're good minions at higher level, but they also can be dangerous in a group at like mid level too. So I, I, I guess, Isaiah, the answer to your question is, uh, that I would say is, yes, I think that the shadow should be a slightly higher CR only because there is no sort of tagging or categorizing system in 5e. So by making it slightly C- slightly higher CR, you uh, you can mitigate the problem that some GMs, GMs run into where they just get fucking surprise you know surprise butt sex the shadow tpk's your team your party you know what i mean yeah i could see that i don't i because mm-hmm. like you're right they're not that strong everything else about the shadow is not that bad but that strength drain can catch you by surprise really hard and also they have a bunch of resistances which is annoying and a big deal at at early levels Mm-hmm. Like a sh- that's the funny thing about shadows too is like big deal at early levels, still a concern at higher levels, but much easier to deal with because you have magical weapons, you have more spells, you can hit harder, blah 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 blah. But they could still potentially drain all of your wizard strength. So like they they're could. still I'm, a concern. I'm to like, but- yeah, it is a concern. Don't get me wrong. I'm trying to put it into words. It's if you've got something like a shadow. And, and this is part of my, like, you know, completely unofficial nonsense mental math. I, I sort of well, think about it as... As we established, challenge rating is nonsense mental math. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. Like, if I'm going to add anything that has something like an instant kill or an instant down or a particularly high damaging ability, you have to... F- I feel like you, as a, as a um, encounter builder, have to know that that thing cannot have a numerical advantage against your party, right? Right, so that's... Like, if well, you've got... If you've got three players, and, they're sh- and the shadows are CR one half, uh-huh. if you drop six of them, those things have numerical advantage. They will just overwhelm you just by sheer nature of them not only doing damage, but having a direct access to character death. Right, well, so this that's the thing about shadows, right? Is the strength drain ability bypasses all of the usual defenses that player characters can utilize which is to say it bypasses hp it you know it 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 bypasses saves it like it gets around and targets players where they are much weaker than normal and you're right in that if a care if a if a monster has this sort of instant death ability then You as a GM should look at that and go, oh, okay, so I should be more uh, tempered with how I use this monster. The thing is, you're saying that because you've GM'd for long enough to figure that out and understand that. Oh, of course. Yeah, no, I'm I'm completely aware that hindsight is 2020. Right. That's that's where it becomes a problem. As a newer GM, that does not that is not always immediately apparent. Even if it, even with something like a banshee whale, which if you look at it and you read it verbatim, 
you could look at it as a brand new GM and go, oh, a Banshee could down someone from full HP to nothing. That seems pretty strong. But you as a new player go, yeah, but I mean, the designers know what they're doing. I trust the designers. They wouldn't throw something that ridiculous in there if there wasn't a balancing around it. So it must I must just be not understanding how it works properly. And then you throw it at the party and then it fucks the players up. And what you find out is, oh, no, sometimes the designers just design more powerful monsters. And I don't it's not even this is the thing that really drives me crazy. I love shadows. I love banshees. I love cult fanatics. I like their. Be- I love power word kill. I like there being monsters and abilities that make players shit their pants a little bit. I just want to be warned. I just want to know ahead of time that that's what I'm doing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I mean, I'm also I'm looking at the banshee. shadows it's are only- really fun. <laughs> yeah. I was saying, the, with the banshee to use. for the whale. It's a once a day. So they can only do it once. And the DC, the con save for it is not super is high. very low. It's pretty it's 13. low. 13. 13, right. It's pretty but low. At for fourth, level one players, like that's just mean. That's at very mean. four even at fourth level, you could still reasonably fail that. 13 is just is high enough, you know? Mm. And here's the thing. I like it, it, it's like I do like the strength drain on shadows. I like that it gets players, you know, shaking in their boots a little bit, but I don't always want to do that. So I want the game to sort of forewarn me that like, Hey, this monster has a certain type of ability. That's going to make the players sweat as it were, but the game doesn't have anything in place to do that. And so what happens is you have four level one players. You throw four shadows at them and Oh no, I killed two out of three out of four two out of four you know yeah that's really where it's a problem it's like you don't want to be caught you know caught with your pants down as it were yeah that's like um the one of the earlier like matt colville videos where he's talking about the uh the, the dillian tomb and running the encounter he talked about why specifically he chose goblins for the encounter instead of like other like weaker enemies like kobolds he's like kobolds he's like the, the main difference he's like goblins will last a smidge longer than kobolds he's like kobolds die if you look at them so it's like yep. if you throw them at level like this adventure is meant for level one players and to make them like really get into the trenches of like you know fighting and combat and stuff he's like you throw a bunch of kobolds at them they are gonna just you know just rampage through the whole the whole thing right he's like but if you throw like you know goblins and orcs He's like, then it's a little more challenging. And it's like, it's right. fun. It's but not that like overly is, challenging, but it's like. That's again, in an intuitive understanding of yeah. how the game works, because goblins and kobolds. As as far as I'm aware, hold on, actually, hold on. Let me I'm going to pull this up. I think goblins and kobolds are both uh, CR half, right? Or quarter, I mean. Ye- so, yes. Goblin. Quarter, OK, I'm looking right now. Goblin. Oh, no. Okay. Kobolds are one eighth. Okay. All right. So in that case, you could actually use the CR ranking. So kobolds are one eighth. Goblins are one quarter. Yep. But, you know, it's a real quick. I I had a thought. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Would you be I I feel like I would be happier. Personally. If they made a a, a remark in the DMG or the player's handbook, wherever they put it, that if you use several of the same creature, add an addition to the math, right? So if, let's say, a Banshee is CR1. I, I don't remember what, what we said it was. I don't remember if I meant four. They're let's four. say one Banshee is CR4, right? Yep. Now, if you have one Banshee and one CR creature of another, uh, you know, one creature of CR4 as well, right? Yeah. Well, now you have a CR8 encounter. Yep. But if you have two Banshees, that becomes a CR12 encounter. You know what I mean? Because they have overlapping right. abilities, right? Right. They, they kind, they kind of do, but not to, not for that specific. So, it's mostly just the number of monsters. Right. Right. So I see what you're saying, and you're right. And I have, I distinctly remember a couple of times in our campaign that we just finished as a where I ran into this problem, because it's true. There are certain monsters 
where if you overlap them either with each other or with another monster, that you create this really weird death spiral, like, player trap situation. Because I, I distinctly remember uh, I had an encounter where my players were fighting um, Babao, Bababao, Babadao. Oh, the the Baba yeah, the little, yeah, the demon, demon, yeah, the little Baba-oo's. demon masters. Guys, yeah, yeah. Or Babaos. I believe Baba-oo, it's Babaos. I think I don't know. Babaos and the stinky goat monsters. The 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 blues owl. The Bula, yeah, the Bula's owls. Bula's owl. Or Bula's yeah. owl. I don't remember which one. But yeah. They got weird names. I combined those I'm two monsters to to in one fight. Mm. What I did not realize is both of these monsters have a beginning of turn con save and those two monsters stacked on top of each other were forcing my players to make two con saves every turn (laughs) and making two con saves every turn stacks up to the point where eventually you're just guaranteed to fail and you're gonna get fucked because the two abilities stack on top of each other but I didn't realize that and it's the same thing pause pause real quick what I looked it up, and this is the Forgotten Well, Forgotten Realms wiki. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Bob, the B A B A U is Babaos. Babao. B A B W O W Z. B A B O W Z. Babaos. Okay. Where? Where's the Z? I don't where, know. How, I don't know. What? Hold I on, I'm looking up the reference for this. I, I'm. I, I don't. I hate this, and I want to know. I, I don't. Oh, know. this is from Dragon Magazine. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, I hate this. Point being, Isaiah is kind of right where there are monsters that if you stack them either with themselves or with other types of monsters will take a a fight from something that seems reasonable to all of a sudden is very unreasonable because of a weird synergy between abilities. Uh, For example, with the Banshee example, if you fight two Banshees at the same time, that means double the whale, which takes effectively what you've done is given the Banshee's advantage on their whale roll. That's or or another way to phrase it. You gave you players you gave players disadvantage on the save. That's a really big yes. change. You effectively, Ooh. by putting two Banshees in the fight, gave the players a minus five to their saving roll. But there's no way for you to know that unless you understand how the game works. Like, I wouldn't do that because I know what I'm doing, but a new GM, t- good chance you just don't notice. You just didn't yeah, read I mean, it. I, here's the reading, crazy thing, the too. Fucking, yeah, you're over. The crazy thing about this is that this happens a lot at really low levels, too. Uh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. There are plenty of horror stories of, of level one parties getting murked by wolves because of pack tactics or because of pack tactics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, uh huh. Like if you've got, you're like, oh, we've got four party members. Oh, you twelve kobolds. That's nothing. It's like, well, okay, right. pause. That is basically guaranteed one hit per uh, per kobold. Pretty now, much. Now kobolds do a d6 plus three. That's an average of six to seven damage. A wizard only has seven hit points. Yep. That yep. wizard's gonna fucking explode before it blinks. A d4 plus two damage. But still, you're still in the right realm ballpark. Um, Fair enough. Uh, f- uh, wolves too. Wolves yeah, have yeah. Uh, what bite and claw. I think they, they might have two attacks. Or maybe that's uh, a dire wolf. But dire uh, wolves also wolf? have pack tactics. A wolf has a bite attack, which is two d four plus two damage. Yeah. See, that's enough to drop a fucking a uh, rogue or not a rogue, a wizard. Oh yeah. In uh, two rounds. Not even. One one good bite potentially. <laughs> So it's like, yeah, but again, that's your understanding of how the game functions. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, it, it does seem like there needs to be more guidance or warning or or a tag system or or so, like something. I, I don't even know exactly what, but it's like. The CR is a good starting point. It's a good baseline to sort of figure out what what your jumping off point is, but it doesn't take you all the way. 
I, I guess is kind of is is sort of the uh, the the TLDR, <laughs> right? Like good yeah, starting I, like, point. I agree. Doesn't take you all the way. Mm. So we will pivot slightly. Okay. I, I, <laughs> I just want to say, I feel like I maybe did a bad job. I said I was going to defend CR and then it sounded like I shat on CR a lot. Uh, but like, I don't know. I guess the, uh, the, the, the general summary is that I don't think CR is a totally useless number. I still think it's very useful and you can do a lot with it. You just have to understand that the way the game tells you to use it is probably just not the best way to use it. It's a good jumping off point. It's a very good jumping off point. Yeah. And it's better than nothing at all, which I think is the main thing because yeah, uh, I would. Yeah, it's like a it's like a scientific theory, right? Understand that the the CR system (laughs) as it is, is your hypothesis that you are now testing. So allow it to change. Yeah. Give yourself like wiggle room for it. Um, but don't just hate on it carte blanche because I feel like the cool thing to do on the internet these days is just hate on the CR system. You know? Yes. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. I, it's one of those things where you want to argue people and be like, well, it's not worthless. It's, it's not just not perfect. It's not worth it's, or it's great. It's like a, it's, but, it's, it's a, it's a video game beta. It's not a shit product. It just needs a little more time in the oven, right? Like it. Yeah, it is I, serviceable. Okay. It works from level one up lower, until around level seven. It does work like, decently well at lower levels. Yeah. That's true. And then once you get to between like, or again, right now, like with me and then even in the three year game, CR actually worked for me up until level like 11 or 12 in the three year game. Right now, currently, I'm hitting that problem at level nine where I'm like, yeah, the math ain't checking out, chief. Uh, right. Right. Fuck. Yeah, it's a. Uh, yeah, I mean, even the player uh, players. Holy crap, I can't talk. <laughs> the designers also understand that it's a, a fuckity wonkity system because they've explicitly said for 2024, one of the big things they're doing is redesigning the CR calculation system in the new dmg so they're aware of it too Mm. um but you know i i honestly if i were to take a guess and this is just a guess i don't i don't really know but you know we've had five years five e's been out for 10 years now i honestly think the reason that it's so jank as it is is because much like everything else in the fucking dmg the designers were kind of operating under the assumption that the person running the game already sort of knew what they were doing. So they didn't look at the the encounter balancing system for very long because they didn't feel like it was worth the manpower. And they were also a really small team with a smaller budget and all this other stuff. So it just kind of got pushed to the wayside, which I think is true of a lot of the DMG got just pushed to the wayside you know there was there was a video i recently watched you on cr and they were saying that apparently one of the other things which i didn't know about until recently uh they simplified whatever their actual like method is for like coming up with cr and challenge rating all that jazz Uh and they simplified it and then put that in the dmg so Uh. it's not like like they mentioned like we have our own system our own system right they their system is more complicated and they're like how do we slim this the fuck down? I wonder if that's and still make the it case. legible <laughs> for people. Interesting. I wonder if it's still the. I, I, I'd be willing to bet that they probably have an even better system now, and I bet you it's not as complicated. No, I, be, I, I, I could I mean, be wrong, I but I bet. Like they like Call the main thing was theory, they had to slim it theory. down. Yeah, <laughs> they had to slim it down, and their main their other main thing was. They wanted to make it not as complicated for new like new players to like read and pick up. You're right. like, already we're looking. You're looking at this like this system. Like how to homebrew a monster, and you get this like giant chart. Yeah, I, and you're like, oh uh. my god. Let me tell you. And then you I, read the thing where it's like, step one, read the thing. Step two, read this other thing. Step three, go back and read the two things you had before and cross reference. I it wish. With this thing. I wish I could remember. There was another game I was reading that had a homebrew your old monster system. That was so much more fucking intuitive than the one in 5e. And I was just looking at it being like, D&D, why you no do this? 
I was yeah. so mad. I was just like, come on, this is so much better. Oh, God, I wish fun, I could remember fun, what game it was. Fun mini game you can do. Uh, look at your players, like, you know, numbers, like proficiency bonus and math and all that, and see what CR they are. Oh, yeah. It's super fucking wonky. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, I don't even know how that would. Yeah, that sounds weird. I, I think would... I. I think I actually and, ended and up CR doing it doesn't for one red. No, it doesn't. CR doesn't like, have any calculations for like magic items. No. So how like, would you, you can't even get an accurate number really? No, it's not really. I think I guesstimated, and one of my players, one of them, was like a CR eleven monster. And I'm like, this can't At be what right. Level. Uh, their current level nine. Nine. Oh yeah. But now I'm like going back to what you were like. Oh, maybe players are like equal to a sea monster of similar like challenge rating. So yeah. like, my player should be fighting like my player is one to one with CR nine. But then when I looked at the math of like how much damage, how much AC my player has, all that shit, the proficiency bonus, I was like, huh, this one character is a CR eleven monster. That's fucking funny. I, I mean, players being a little bit above the CR of monsters at their level, I, I think does make sense because at the end of the day, you don't want the game to be 50 50, right? Yeah. Because if the game is 50 50, that means the players lose half the time. And from a tabletop context in a video game context, that makes sense in a tabletop context. That is not very fun. Mm. So you, it makes sense that they, a, a level nine player punches above a CR nine monster because that's kind of what you want. You want the game to be like 70 30, but the game doesn't tell you any of that cool. <laughs> or explain that. Well, so I told you guys my crazy thing or recently I've had to like add up all my players health and how much damage they do per round yeah, and yeah, all that yeah. stuff. And it's like, so if I put one singular monster in front of all six of my players, for that one monster to last more than one round of combat, it has to have like over 400 health. Right, which so I like, think honestly... Sucks. I'm like, that sounds like unfun. Annoying, yeah. I yeah. think honestly, probably one of the best numbers that you could calculate yourself is your player's damage per turn. I think that is probably one of the most useful numbers you can figure out because that can give you a good gauge on just how long things will go on for. Obviously, it's not a perfect number, but it's a good enough gauge to figure things out sweet christ last uh, time i did that math and it's when my players were at level 13 <laughs> oh yeah uh they did round about there were six of them they did round about like 350 damage around fucking all, christ dude. all your players at once yeah Wild. yeah, yeah. Like all of them together did about 360 damage around According Wild. to them, because the, the rogues, uh, the rogues guys, did that's... about 70 to 80 damage each. Oh. Yeah, that's pretty good because one of the rogues, Jesus uh, Christ, that that my player Snubby was playing. So Hellscapes, I've talked about this before, gives you an ability called Thrash, which makes all of your unarmed strikes yeah, yeah. do 3d6 damage. And I ruled at level one because there's no monk that it doesn't make sense that there's unarmed strikes only are based on strength, right? If you're a character, you know, that's got built in like arm blades or whatever, because you're part prey mantis, it makes sense to have decks as an uh, available option. Right, and right. I didn't realize how, how hard that was going to scale with <laughs> bones when I had two of them. So a player who gets, and I also made them, uh, lets you do unarmored attacks as a, as a bonus action, like two weapon fighting. So if a rogue gets three attacks around, you shouldn't have because done that. yeah, I know it gets uh, up to three attacks around, and on top of that, they're doing seven d six plus nine d six plus one d eight plus a bunch of bullshit, and you're like, oh, you just did eighty damage, and you got yeah. another attack coming. That's like so much. Oh, that's just too much. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and now one of the players is a barbarian. So with yeah. Reckless, she also gets three attacks around and also took Thrash and is a strength based character. So doesn't have to worry about that dual typing bullshit. Numbers basically the same, if not a little higher. And then yeah, I've that. got two characters who <laughs> multi-classed pal uh, Paladin equivalent. Mm. So just smiting out the ass at range because hellscape specifically says 
a weapon fun. attack, not melee weapon attack. So, and because most of the weapons are guns, you can smite at range. Uh, so when you're doing 2d12 plus like 10d6 or whatever, and you're just like, oh, I see. And the numbers get pretty dumb. I think I'd just pull the Matt Mercer with like the two barbarians. He's like, all right, guys, no rage turned on. Just go clean fight. Let's just, you know, otherwise you're going to be here all day. Just, just cut the damage dice in half. Like, let's just go back to normal. <laughs> like, <laughs> Look, I would love that. I would love that to death. But uh, I can't just tell all my, my paladins and rogues that they're not allowed to use their class abilities. I don't I thought you could still use them. Just to, like, you know, take, a, take, take away dice. Take away a dice or two. No, I'm not going to do that. Because <laughs> at that point, the issue becomes... I'm just I'm nerfing three quarters of the party and then letting one quarter of the party stay busted as fuck or two thirds and letting one th third stay busted as fuck. And at, at this point, I'm just so used to letting to almost killing them in one shot that I just accept that they're going to maybe die in one shot. And I find it very funny. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, hell, hell uh, hellscape seems generally quite a bit more swingy in that way. Yes, and and to their credit, they specifically state that that's by design. I yeah, just I mean, don't that, think it, that makes sense for a post-apocalypse game. Yeah, my the only thing that I think is that they maybe didn't realize just how swingy it got, because it gets real swingy at later levels. Oh, I bet. Maybe, maybe. Uh, well, like if I I took a standard. Sorry, I didn't mute real quick. I, I took a uh, the mm -hmm. what was it? The, the King of Feathers, which I used for a boss fight, but I mixed it with the... I don't remember who made the level 20 King of Feathers, but there's a CR20 King of Feathers that I used. Um, yeah. And it dropped my Scavenger, which is Ant's character, which is the equivalent of a Sorcerer, in one shot. Yeah. One solid shot. And to be fair, his health was halved. It wouldn't have mattered, I promise you. <laughs> uh, he had about 25 health at the time because he was suffering from the anime uh, un incurable disease. Uh, and it just smacked the shit out of him. Yeah, hypergonosyphilis. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> and it almost killed him in one shot. <laughs> it was very funny to watch. Uh. All right. Well, we're now just going to very abruptly transition because I want to mention how some other games do this CR shit. Uh, not that anybody else calls it CR, but you know. Yes. Uh, there's a couple of other th games I just wanted. To, I just want to bring up because I mentioned I was like, you know, you don't fully appreciate CR until you've had to go without it. So I just want to bring up a couple of you know a couple of examples in question. The first example does kind of have a CR system, but I think it's just a much more simple straightforward much easier to deal with system and I, I I don't know why 5e doesn't do it this way but uh Shadow of the Demon Lord has a great difficulty scaling system that's just it, it just works good I don't it, it, at least okay I should preface the statement I haven't run Shadow of the Demon Lord I've only read through it but based on what I've read and what I've heard other people talk about, it seems like it works quite well. So Shadow of the Demon Lord, it's real simple. You have a difficulty score per day based on what... Uh, how do I phrase it? What bracket you're... So I have to explain the leveling system a little bit here. So the way Shadow of the Demon Lord works is you start at level zero and then you go up to level 10. Everyone levels at the same time. And from levels one from levels, sorry, or from level zero to four. No, level zero to now I have to pull it up. Hold on, please hold. Please hold. I can do this. I promise. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, that's right. Never mind. It's not. I'm trying to not explain the entire game right now. <laughs> Basically, players have at level one, you start as what's called a novice path. And then at level four, you get your expert path. Or is it level five four or five? 
And then at level, I think it's seven, you get your master path. And essentially, you get, you choose a class from each of those paths as you go and level. Not really important right now. The main thing is, though, when you're running, right, you essentially have a difficulty budget based on what, uh, what rank your players are in. So when your players are novice characters, they can handle a difficulty of 25 per day. So another way you could think about it is sort of 25 CR per day. That's not exactly how it shakes down, but that's just sort of the easiest way to think about it. Um, as they become uh, experts, or sorry, novices, they can handle 100 difficulty points per day as they become experts they can handle 200 difficulty points per day and when they become masters they can handle 500 per day and you might say okay how did the difficulty points work uh it's real fucking simple every monster has a difficulty point value you add those points up over the total of the adventuring day that's it that's the math. You just add the monsters together. It's really straightforward. So, for example, if my players are fighting a Barrow White, a Barrow White is difficulty 25. Right? As a novice character, as novice characters, they can handle 100 difficulty points per day. What does that mean? They can fight four Barrow Whites in one adventuring day. That's it. Job's done. <laughs> it's just really simple, clean math. Eh. And like, I, I don't. Couldn't be me. Five E. Why you <laughs> no do? I don't like. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> I again. Now again, I haven't run this game. I want to at some point, but I have not had the chance to run this game. So I don't know if you know. The math seems really simple, but is actually really shit, right? Like it could fall apart and not work as well as it sounds, but it's so straightforward. You just 10 plus 10 is 20. 20 plus 20 is 40. 40 plus 10 is 50. Like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, yeah. Like, I don't I don't really necessarily have a point other than this. I remember looking at this and being like, why can't 5e just do it that? Like, could you ima imagine if you will? The game just said, if you have four players that are level four, they can take on, you know, 15 CR worth of monsters per day. And you just add them together and you go, ah, oh, sick. Problem solved. Like, why did they not do that? I don't know. I, it probably is just due to how swingy magic items can be on some at like, right? Because at some Maybe? point, there's just no way to quantify the amount of math that but goes into every permutation of magic item and class combination. Sh sure, mm -hmm. but Shadow like, of the Demon Lord also has magic items. Yeah, but they don't get as Radonka as probably as the ones in um, 5e. Not quite, like, but pretty close. Like I'm looking at that the again the the how to make a quick monster thing. Guess what's the highest homebrew CR monster? Apparently CR thirty is supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Nineteen. Wait, what? Armor class of nineteen is the highest for the homebrew list. Tiabot's AC is twenty-three. Yeah. Nineteen misses. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, like what? It's, it's like a there it's like yeah it's messed up but like when you're homebrewing a monster for a cr30 the normal ac is supposed to be 19. that's way too low yeah now yeah. also just to bring it to, to my players uh two of my players have an ac of nine uh, three of my players have an ac of 19 or higher currently right yeah yeah so magic items fucky wucky the math Real bad. <laughs> right, right. Which, which I look, look, don't get me wrong. I, I do understand that. But 
I, I the thing I really don't understand is, is that whole thing where CR is like, oh, as you add more monsters, you have to multiply the value based on how many more monsters they are and shit. Yeah, I think but Shadow of the Demon Lord doesn't recommend any of that math. It just says add them up oh. flat. Yeah, I, and honestly, I think at higher levels, that's what most DMs probably end up doing. Add not, them up flat. Yeah, should do. I mean, again, mm. I, I told you guys, I threw like one death knight per player. Right, true. You did say 20, that. Yeah, so that's like, true. You did do that. And I was just like, fuck it, we ballered. Like, at some point, <laughs> yeah. Uh, once you get to that, like, honestly, I probably should have been doing that like around level sixteen and then up, right? Not just at level twenty, right? Yeah, interesting. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I'm sure there's probably some sort of reason why five E. I'm sure if five E could have made as simple as a system as Shadow of the Demon Lord did, they would have. So I'm going to assume there's some sort of reason that they didn't, but. Looking at the difficulty per day system in Child of the Demon Lord just makes me really go, man, that is so much easier. So much more straightforward. You go, oh, okay. My characters are novices. They are level 100. They can fight four Barrow Whites per day. Not even, and you don't need, and the other thing is too, you don't even have to do it. It's per adventuring day. So you don't even have to worry about it on a per encounter basis. As long as you spread them out over the entire day, you can mix and match whatever combination of creatures over the day that you want. As long as you're within your budget. Yep. Which is even easier. Whereas 5e is like, no, no, no. You have to do math for every single encounter. And I'm like, why though? And then 5e also has an adventuring day budget, which is also kind of confusing and i don't know that i've ever looked at it or even tried to use it i'm gonna be honest i don't know about y'all but i don't think i've ever tried to use it Am uh, I use what specifically the the budget of xp per adventuring day in 5e no i no 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 not, not, not even close didn't even right? look at it yeah i think i did for the first half of the three-year game and by for actually no not even first half I think I did it up until like I don't know, maybe the Calorel like castle fight. And then at some point realized it just wasn't worth it. Yeah. Well yeah. actually, okay. Let me specify. I didn't look at it, but maybe just for the sake of things, I probably should have because my game is going on four years. Uh, you know. <laughs> many, many session cancellations due to real life notwithstanding. Well, uh, still <laughs> gonna be four years in uh four weeks. Right, right. And my players are only level 17. And well, I own their only level 17 because I bumped them to 17. Here's the right. thing, though. So the maybe I should have looked at it. The more. adventuring XP per day thing isn't even really talking about leveling progression so much as it's talking about encounters per day. Because what it says is your XP budget is how many points of XP. Again, see, this is the other stupid thing. CR is based on XP value, whereas Shadow hmm. of the Demon Lord just called it difficulty rating, which is a much more sensible name. Yeah. The fuck? But the thing is, in in 5e, it says you have X amount of XP points to spend on encounters, but the thing is, is that's not necessarily the XP they're earning. Because remember, if you add multiple monsters, that multiplies the XP value of the encounter. And the adventuring day math is talking about that final number you get after doing the multiplication. But the multiplication is not the XP that players get when they defeat the monsters. So it's not even giving you a recommended amount of XP that the players earn per day. It's giving you an amount of XP that the players fight per day. Which is even more confusing. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. And I, 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 I can't remember exactly how the math shakes down. And I'm not going to try and open up and find it right now because it'll take me fucking five minutes probably to find it and not going to bother. But yeah. So like even, even if you tried to use it as a recommended curve for like how fast your game should be going, it doesn't even totally work for that. 
Yeah. And remember the whole encounter per day thing when it comes to that is, is also it doesn't have to be combats. If you wanted to, you could have but, thrown like. But rules is yeah. written. Combat's the only thing that gives you XP. I know. So rules is written. That's how you have to assume you're going to use it. Mm. Even though you. And because the other thing is that section talking about encounters per day is referencing how you need to. Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? How you need to not mitigate. Uh. It's talking about how you need to burn through your players' resources over the course of a day. Yeah. Which is only really going to happen in combat because most resources in 5e are going to be used via combat. Or dungeon delving. Right, or some degree of dungeon delving, which is sort of still kind of sort of combat, right? Like, or danger, I guess. So it's like... It's... (laughs) It's such a mess. It's such a mess. I get it's crazy. It's craziness. Uh, I wish I could find. I probably should have opened up the PDF prior to recording and looked for it, but I didn't do that. So here we are. But yeah, it's referencing XP per day in your encounter XP budget, not XP that the players earn. Again, why did they use XP as the difficulty rating value? I do not know. That's fucking dumb. It probably says wizards. Why? Monster Manual or the Dungeon Master's Guide. No, it says how to do it. I'm just saying, why did they make that decision? Oh, no, I'm saying it It might be somewhere in there. Like, they're, you know. Why? That? No, it doesn't say why they made it. Hmm. No, they usually, no, there'll be like one line usually where they'll be like, you know, this is, you know, it does this. And then you're like, okay. I just unlock you. <laughs> nope. Sorry. Nope. Um, anyway. Uh, so Fantasy Flight. I was like, Flight, oh no, I broke him. No, you're good. Fantasy Flight Star Wars does not have uh, any kind of CR system. Like at all. <laughs> um, There's no budget of like XP or difficulty and there's no CR rating. Instead, all it is is enemies have three different typings and those typings just sort of vaguely indicate how dangerous the enemy is. And those typings are minions, rivals, and nemeses. That's it. That's all you get. And you might say, what? How how dangerous is each one? I don't know. Minions are weaker. Rivals are a little better. Nemeses are very dangerous. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They give you nothing like no tools by which to do to sort of very little. They sort of vaguely describe. So like nemeses are, you know, stormtroopers or like grunts or like random thugs right that's or sorry jesus christ minions minions are just you know stormtroopers or random thugs or whatever right uh and minions are basically if the it it says the book says if players fight minions 1v1 they're just gonna fucking wipe the floor with them because minions are basically useless nerds right so like Han Solo fights one stormtrooper. He's going to fucking whoop his ass because it's Han Solo. Rivals are, you know, slightly better versions of minions. So like a stormtrooper captain or like a bounty hunter who's like a gilded bounty hunter who's got a couple of years under his belt. That's like a rival. And a rival is like, you know... A rival might show up with a couple of minions to back him up. But they're not as strong as player characters, but, you know, they're kind of like, you know, they're a little tougher. Whatever. And then nemeses are basically equivalent to player characters in terms of power level. And a nemesis is, you know, Boba Fett. Kylo Ren, 
right? Those would be like nemesis characters. But it could also be somebody like a really skilled Imperial assassin is a nemesis. So it's like named NPCs are nemesis, nemeses, okay. but also just sort of relatively notable like warrior types. But mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's it. That's all the guidance. There's no recommendation. So the thing, Star Wars doesn't have levels. Fancy Flight Star Wars doesn't use levels, right? You have an XP count. Uh, but the game doesn't recommend what kind of XP count. Like, you know, if the players have 300 XP, they can fight X number of minions. Doesn't say it doesn't say how many rivals to throw at them at once, how many nemeses to throw at them at what. It just doesn't have guidance for any of this shit. It tells you roughly the power level of the three types. And that's about it. Hmm. Huh. And I don't know if you remember, Weird. Isaiah, but when I ran Fantasy Flight Star Wars, I almost brutally murdered you guys multiple times. Oops. Yeah, well, so I, yeah. And we even talked about this in a way earlier episode that you, like, specifically were trying to test the waters to see how far you could push the minions before they got a little egregious. Uh, a little bit, but that was only, like, once. There were multiple other times where I just accidentally threw too many dudes because... I just wasn't sure how many dudes to throw at you. The answer was Mm. not as many as I did. (laughs) You know? And then I threw the nem... And then the other thing is, I was coming from 5e brain, so I threw a nemesis character at you, and the nemesis character basically almost 1v3'd you guys. Yes. But I was... I didn't think he was going to be able to do that. Like, I was like, wait, what the fuck? Like, he was way stronger than I was expecting him to be. So, that's what I mean when I say, you know, CR might not be perfect, but you should still appreciate it while it's there. Because, you know, if it's not there, you go, oh no, <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, yeah, I almost killed the players multiple times in Fantasy Flight Star Wars because there was no budget or like you know explanation of how many dudes you should use or whatever and here's the other thing too the types of minions or or, or, the, or the types of adverse adversaries that's what the game calls them the types of adversaries mm. that you can run into can vary quite drastically in terms of their danger so like to give you an example in some of the adversary examples that the game gives you in the force and destiny book, a hyper lane scout and a pod racer pilot are both considered rival type enemies, but they're nerds. They're rivals quote unquote, because they're good at a very specific thing, but they're not good in like combat. Like Mm. the pod racer pilot is considered a rival because he's really good at mechanics and piloting and planetary streetwise and shit. And he has an ability that makes him really good at piloting. He can do a full fr- full throttle action, but he's not good at fighting at all. And his soak value sucks and his wound threshold is low, which is to say his HP and armor, basically. But he's still a rival. So even within the typing system, there's still some ambiguity because some enemies are rivals because they're dangerous in a fight and some enemies are rivals because they're dangerous in like a social encounter. So it's just kind of confusing. Another example, uh, there's another rival stat block that's called that's a, uh, a, 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 to- a toy toy Darian merchant. He's just a merchant. Why is a merchant considered a rival? Oh, it's because he has an ability that makes him really good at negotiating, and he's got a high skill in deception and a high skill in perception. So Mm. in a social encounter, he's dangerous. But in any other context, he's a punk bitch. He's just a nerd. He's just a fucking nerd. So it's like... Fantasy Flight Star Wars, what the fuck? (laughs) So you go, okay, so how am I supposed to figure this one out? Basically, you have to play the game long enough to kind of understand what 
number values are are considered high and whatnot. Like, you know, you have to look at the stats and skills and go, okay, having a three. So the way Star Wars, I'm not going to explain the dice system, but just because it would take a while. The way Star Wars works is like having a three in a skill and then a three in a stat means that that character is quite good at that ability. So if you have, you know, uh, if a character has a three in their presence and a three in their deception, that means they're rolling three yellow dice, which are the better dice. Again, I'm not going to get too into it. So they are quite good at that, uh, that particular skill. But if you don't, if you haven't played the game that long and you don't totally have that system well understood, you might not realize because three doesn't sound like a lot. But in that in this game, it kind of is a lot like having having a stat that's at three or four and then having a skill that's at three or four means you're really fucking good at that skill. You're really good at that. But in D&D, if you had a plus three to something, you're quite shit at it. You're like a little above, you know, average or whatever. So it's like you have to understand the game well enough to sort of know what the numbers mean to be able to look at these stat blocks and understand what they do. And then even if you do, you still might throw too many storms to present your players. (laughs) So it's like. That's the situation where I'm like, man, I wish there was some kind of a CR system at all something you know yeah that certainly seems like it would have been fucking helpful yeah yeah Mm -hmm. and then my other example of uh why you should maybe appreciate cr is dungeon world and apocalypse world no shut up matt (laughs) dungeon world and apocalypse world have no cr system No enemy strength system, nothing at all in any way to tell you how dangerous or weak uh, an enemy might be. There is absolutely no system at all. Now, granted, these games need it, don't need it as much as some other games, because when you're dealing with. The thing about Apocalypse World and Dungeon World is the encounters are supposed to follow the fiction of the game. So, you know, if you walk into the king's chambers and call him a punk bitch and try to kill him and then he summons his elite guardsmen on you, you're going to get the floor wiped with you because fictionally the king is going to have a bunch of badasses guarding him. That just makes sense. Right. That follows the fiction. So that's kind of that's the kind of stuff Dungeon World expects you to do. Same with Apocalypse World. But. It, you know, it's good because you're not beholden to any kind of encounters per day type math. Right. But it's bad because if you want to try and pace your players out over like an extended session and you want to have them do multiple fights, it's kind of hard to gauge how many fights can they do? Is this monster really strong? Is this monster really weak? I don't really know. There's no kind of difficulty rating or CR rating system. How do I figure it out? And the answer is you just kind of figure it out intuitively based on your understanding of how the game works. Damn, I was really hoping you'd quote uh, Omni Man. What's the Omni Man? That's the neat part. You don't. You don't. Um, yeah, <laughs> kind of, I mean, sorta. <laughs> like, so what I mean by that is, for example, in Dungeon World, so there's an armor system in Dungeon World where when you take damage, you subtract your armor value from the damage you took. Uh, yeah, a lot of older didn't older editions do that too. Not of D and D, no. Thaco. No, No, that's not what that. No, 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 not. No, no. That co is you subtracted from your attack roll. Dungeon World is I hit you for 12 damage. Well, I have three armor, so I take nine damage. It's not the attack. Maybe I'm it's the damage. Maybe I'm mixing it because I think the oh, the MCDM game, I think, is doing that. Actually, they were doing that at one point, but then they changed it. Oh, yes. But anyway, point being. 
So one of the Dungeon World has this armor rule uh, in Star Wars has a soak value. It's the same idea. Um, and in Dungeon World, basically, you're never going to see anything like if you see a creature with three armor, that's high. That's a high armor value. But obviously, the only way you would know that is if you've played the game enough and looked at the monster stat blocks enough to understand what is or is not a high armor value, right? So if you give a monster four armor, for example, that's like crazy strong. But if you give them like only a D6 of damage, not that bad. So like the most dangerous enemy in the game, the apocalypse dragon has five armor. So, like, that's the kind of range you're looking at, you know, one to five or whatever. Uh, It also only has 26 HP. And you might go, okay, well, what kind of damage are the players rolling? Well, a paladin with a longsword is rolling a D10 plus one. So three attacks, four attacks, he could potentially kill that dragon. But there's other factors that you have to take into account because Dungeon World relies heavily on fictional power. So one of the reasons a dragon is really dangerous is because they have a tag that's called messy. And what messy means is anytime they attack something, they rip it apart. So, for example, your paladin tries to attack the dragon and gets a 7 to 9 result, which is a success but with a cost. They hit the dragon, the dragon hits them, the dragon rips their arm off because they have the messy tag paladin you are now down one less arm good luck holding your sword and your shield when you are missing an arm but again if you're coming from D 5e the fact that that's really dangerous and powerful not gonna be immediately obvious until you've played the game enough to understand how that shit works so yeah it's it's kind of annoying to not have like I understand why there's no CR rating system in the in those games but I kind of wish there was a little is something you know what I mean or at least yeah. I wish it was like the it was like Fantasy Flight Star Wars where monsters with tagged with like a danger level like this monster is you know this monster's weak this monster's medium this monster's strong or something like that mm-hmm. something uh, but no, they don't anything give you that. to help. Anything yeah, to jump yeah, I mean, off I, of, it seems yeah. like it's safe to say, as a blanket statement, every tabletop RPG should have something. Well, like I think, something I think, to go off of how to per, how to put a party against enemies. It, every game because I as think the typical should have, just leave you like uh, sorry, not typical, but in the games where you are left in the dark, it is fascinating, somewhat confusing, and a little more than frustrating to be like, well, I. I don't want to murder my players. What the fuck am I supposed to do? Well, well, I think every game. Yeah, every game should have some point of reference. So like, for example, in Dungeon World, maybe it could be the damage rolls or something like that. The thing is, is the reason it doesn't exist in Dungeon World is because Apocalypse World as a system didn't really need a CR system of any kind because the type of fiction is just all it's doing is pulling on actual apocalyptic fiction, which is to say, you know, a dude versus a dude are just two guys. You can fight them. But if you have your bare hands and the other guy has a shotgun, fictionally, the guy with the shotgun is much more dangerous than you. And the game just follows that fiction. So it makes sense. The problem is Dungeon World's a fantasy game and fantasy monsters get to break the rules of reality, right? Mm. That's where it becomes Mm. a little tricky to deal with. So it's like in Apocalypse World, I know if I walk up to five guys who all have submachine guns, I'm probably not going to have a good chance against five dudes with submachine guns in Apocalypse World because I'm just a person. In Dungeon World, I'm a mighty paladin warrior can I fight the dragon 1v1? Maybe? What level am I? You know what I mean? Mm. That's another thing. Apocalypse World doesn't have levels either. 
which Dungeon World does have. So, yeah. Mm. There, generally, you know, an Apocalypse World actually sort of does have guidance in the sense that it tells you degrees of damage and how dangerous they are. So it tells you, right, everyone effectively has like six HP in Apocalypse World. So the game says something that does four damage to you in one hit is really fucking dangerous. So when you look at a guy and you give an NPC a shotgun and then you see that a shotgun does three damage and has the messy tag. Oh, okay. So the shotgun is going to shoot the player, hit them for half their HP and blow their leg off. I can intuitively understand. Okay. That's a dangerous encounter again, though. The player fighting the like magic wizard in Dungeon World. uh, A little harder to gauge that. And HP values are different, and Dungeon World uses damage rolls, Apocalypse World uses flat damage numbers. You know, there's a bunch of shit going on there. So, I don't know, in conclusion, I guess, challenge rating can be a bit of a bitch, but it can also be useful if you just make it, you know, work for you make it bend to your will don't just take it as is Is, I guess is the easiest way to put it yeah I agree (laughs) yeah like I said like like we've been saying uh, use it as a very very broad stroked base template use it as a work frame and then work off of it don't uh, hold to it religiously because it's not meant for that. At least it doesn't seem that way on the face. Yeah, don't. Yeah, definitely and, don't uh, stick to it religiously. Understand that you will not. You might. You will have to wing it at some point. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At some point, we'll have to wing. And you will be sad about it. That's okay. Yeah. Matt. Matt you know, is I, math. I, I, I don't know how Lancer does CR, but I'm very interested to figure it out. Yeah, I haven't gotten to, I haven't gotten to that point either. Yeah. I'm I am curious a little bit about that one too. Be, especially because Lancer is such a heavily uh like the mech combat is so like tactics focused. Yep. So I would hope it would have a like decently robust difficulty rating system of some kind. No guarantee, though, unfortunately. You know, I will be on page like 35 out of 432. So, Jesus. Yeah. We go find yeah, I out. Gotten to. Hmm. Matt, do you have anything to add? Uh, follow us on Twitter. Uh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I'll take it. Sure. All right. Fair enough. Fucking got me there. I don't have. No, a, I think we've. I think we've said we've said our piece. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't. Yeah, I don't have a transition out of this, so I'm just gonna very awkwardly say. Uh, I don't know. Send this episode to a friend who is frustrated about CR, and call your mom. Tell your lover. Stop it. Get Bye. some help. I guess. <laughs> I didn't have a conclusion point here. This is awkward. Yeah, we should have thought of that earlier. That's all right. Oops. Much like CR, we end up winging it a lot. <laughs> <laughs>